No, I'm serious. Can't let them win. Okay. Just don't worry about it. Why don't you just go watch TV? Okay? Yeah. Just relax. Go on. I'll see you for dinner. Second down and nine, play action. Morgan gonna crank up and throw it deep. Got a man streaking out there. And it is intercepted at the 31 yard line. Next time, pet, knock before you come in. Going for the end zone. Touchdown, Tulane! Turnover margin a year ago had 17 interceptions. Now, as we update you on the American Conference scoreboard, Duffy, there he goes off to the races, sprints down the sideline. Oh, you scared me. Where is everyone? They're here. Where's mom? She's over there. Dear Pastor Rev Ingle, I am very sorry to add this additional burden to your work. I left myself in the hands of God's justice and mercy, but apparently he saw fit to ignore my prayers. What I have done is for the best as far as the children's souls are concerned. I know that many will look at the additional years they could have lived, but if they were no longer servants of God, what would be gained? I'm sure many will say, how could anyone do such a horrible thing? My only answer is, it wasn't easy. This was only done after much thought. If we were just dealing with one issue alone, we may have pulled through. But considering everything, it was all just too much. At least I'm certain that all of them are in heaven now. I know that nothing I can say will make it right, but I am assured of making peace with God because of Christ's sacrifice, even for people like me. Kind regards, John. P.S. Mother is in the bedroom upstairs. She was too heavy to move.
Steph, what are you doing? You're supposed to be resting. I'm bored up there. Steph, it's only been three days. You, you might be resting for six weeks. If I don't lose my mind before then. I got it, Dad. It's fine. All right, um, do you, do you, do you want some eggs? No, I'll have cereal. Uh, cereal, okay. I can get it. Oh, what? It's all right, you, yeah. Um. You're bored, huh? That's an understatement. Yeah. I know it's tough. Uh, but, uh... Remember what your mother used to say. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. Well, I gotta go to work soon, but if, if you need anything... I'll be okay. Danny and Melissa are coming over later. Huh. Um, well, look, I, I gotta go to work. Um, yeah. look, you have the, um, you have the eggs, all right? Yeah, you eat that, all right? Gotta go, I gotta go. ready. America needs a tidal wave of the old-time religion. America needs to be taken down to God's bathhouse and the hose turned on her. And the time isn't far distant when the wheels of God's judgment are going to go sweeping through this old God-hating world. And I want to take a pledge in this audience to join me in a pledge that you will never rest until this old God-hating, Christ-hating, whiskey-soaked, Sabbath-breaking, blaspheming, infidel, bootlegging old world is bound to the cross of Jesus Christ by the golden chains of love. Thanks, honey. You're welcome.
Bless us, O Lord, as we give thanks for these gifts from thy bounty. Amen. Amen. What the hell did you do all day? Just watch TV? I got so bored of that, I actually started watching The Neighbors. I never knew you were into voyeurism. Good to know. Not like that. If you watch people for long enough, you realize their lives run like clockwork. They leave the house the same time every morning, mow the lawn every Saturday. It's such a routine existence. <laughs> Housebound for less than a week and you're already having an existential crisis. Maybe I am. Well, don't the neighbors ever do anything exciting? I wouldn't say exciting. Sometimes they do stuff that's kind of funny. Well, like what? Like poor Mrs. Corbett's at number 11 looks like she's having a party every night. Lights keep flashing on and off the whole time. And then I realized what was going on. They have one of those clap-on, clap-off lights installed. Oh, yeah, the clapper. I've seen that on TV. Why would she be clapping constantly? I wondered that. Then my dad told me she has Tourette's. <laughs> Wait, so, <laughs> so you're telling me that <laughs> the lights go on and off when you say fuck too? No, Tourette's doesn't just cause cursing. You get physical tics. Oh. One of Mrs. Corbett's tics is that she slaps her leg, so every time she does that, the lights go off, so she has to clap to get them back on again. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's not funny. It's yes, a serious it condition. That's terrible. <laughs> also, it's creepy. You're just watching her. <laughs> it's a little funny. It's been 18 years. No one can say that we haven't given this ample time. Let's go back the task force to you and Wayne Harris. Now Wayne is retired. It's Time you close this chapter too. I can't justify any more manpower on a case that's colder than Alaska. So what do you suggest I do, sir? Stop taking this case so personally. Move on. Have you seen what he did to that family? What he done to those kids? Listen, you got a lot of cases in the wind column over the years. This is a rare one that got away from you. You gotta accept that. It's time to let it go. He's got a point. You took that case too personally. Come on, Wayne. We worked our asses off and he still got away. Motherfucker made a fool out of all of us. Is that what really stings, Frank? That your ego took a dent? Well, maybe it did. Come on, you saw the crime scene. A guy could do that to his own blood, run him free. I take it you're not going to heed the chief's advice? No. But now he's pulled the plug, i got to go it alone. Well, the first thing is the press. Nationally syndicated magazines, newspapers. Maybe I can get someone interested in doing a follow-up story. Nearly 20 years later? Come on, Frank. We don't even know if he's still in the country. He is. How can you be so sure? Everybody we spoke to about this told us he was a cheerleader for the American dream. Marriage, suburbia, church. He lived for that shit. And nobody does Christian family values like Uncle Sam.
Ja. Thank you. Never realized the neighbors were so interesting. <laughs> Look over there, the garden of number 10. What am I supposed to be looking at here? There's a guy mowing his lawn. Yeah, in a suit. Who mows her lawn in a shirt and tie? It's a little weird, I guess. Do you know much about that guy? Bob Clark. We've said hello from time to time. Can't say I've spoken to him much. I've had a few conversations with his wife, Dolores. She seems nice. I've never really noticed him before, but... Last night, he was watching me from the upstairs window. Really? Yeah, it was kind of creepy. You weren't looking through the binoculars at the time, were you? I might have been. Oh, Christ, Steph. You really need to find something better to do with your time. Why don't you read a book or something? After the murders, Liss cut himself out of every photograph in the house. We discovered he'd lost his job at the Jersey City Bank a few weeks before. We're pretty sure he never shared this information with his family. He'd skimmed money from his mother's bank account to avoid defaulting on the mortgage. He emptied what was left on the day of the killings, and that's what he used to relocate. Good evening. In view of the difficult events that we cover here on the show, I am delighted to start tonight with some positive news. Rapist and murderer David James Roberts is behind bars because of you, the viewers. Our regulars will remember that we profiled Roberts on the show last week, and he's considered one of America's most wanted criminals. Roberts murdered a man by the name of Bill Patrick, his wife, and their child. He also raped the mother and killed her six-month-old son. Yeah, While Frank, trial, he escaped prison in turn on Channel 5. Run... For two years. But after what am I looking show, at? It's a new TV show. They profile fugitives on the run and then ask viewers to call in with tips. <laughs> Shit actually works? The host said some guy on the run for two years was arrested after 75 callers identified him. Well, all right. Let me check it out. I'll give you a call back. Okay. Ever since the first bodies, five of them were pulled from this river.
What are you doing in our house? Um, Steph, this is uh, Mr. Clark. He's come over to apologize. I startled her again. I seem to be making a habit of that today. Stephanie, I'm Bob. Phil, I owe you an explanation. Mrs. Atherton next door goes to my church. She mentioned on Sunday that she had some vermin on her property, so I offered to get rid of it for her. Was it gun? Isn't that a little excessive? So focused on trying to do a good deed for a neighbor that just didn't occur to me. But afterwards, when I saw you, I realized how scary it may have been. The last thing I want to do is frighten a neighbor. Goddamn rats. <laughs> well, uh, Bob, I really appreciate you coming over to uh, address it. It's, yeah. I just hope that Stephanie will accept my apology. Yeah, sure. Bless your heart. As it says in Ephesians 4.31, be kind and compassionate forgiving each other just as through Christ God forgave you. Anyway, I've taken up too much of your time already. Thank you both for your hospitality. Hopefully we'll be seeing more of each other in the future. Yeah, well, um... Thanks again, uh, Bob, for coming over to, yeah, address that. I, I, I'll see you out to the front door. <laughs> a Bible basher with a gun. God, I love this country. Look. What's this? Some guy in New Jersey killed his family 18 years ago. A light reading, huh, Steph? Uh, this guy looks just like Bob Clark. <laughs> oh, Steph. Check out the eyes. It's him. Well, well kind of similar, but I, t I don't think it's the same guy. You'll at least admit he's a total weirdo, though, right? Well, I thought we were two seconds away from him selling us a watchtower, but that hardly qualifies him as somebody who would murder him. Oh, family? Dad, it's him. Steph, oh, Steph! Why can't you read something else? I've never seen the guy before. How am I supposed to know if that's him? Oh my god, you're taking pictures of him too? Stalking much? Well, this isn't helping, Steph. Looks like you took these from space. Yeah, I couldn't exactly go up to him and ask for a close-up, could I? Are you gonna call the cops, Steph? Not yet. I need some actual proof that it is him. How do you plan to get that? Not sure yet, but I'll think of something. All right. Well, I gotta head to practice. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. See ya. Hey, can you hand me that pencil? Sure. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. Ah. <laughs> uh. <coughs> oh. Hey, Mr. Hancock. Hey, Danny. How's it going? Not bad. You still working at the pizza parlor? Yep. How's the um, football going? Pretty good, actually. Um, we're third in the state at the minute, so... Yeah. You planning on making a living from that? Well, I play for the love of it, to be honest with you. Uh, but there's some big league scouts who come from time to time, so you never know. <laughs> <laughs>
Reassuring. Thanks. I just want to be left alone. Can they leave me alone? Why don't they just leave me alone? You are gonna keep it together. You hear me? discovered nearby all those of young prostitutes look bob what do you think new dress yeah isn't it beautiful how much did it cost i got it on sale for 30 bucks that's a little steep is this for the church benefit yeah it's a little figure hugging don't i have a nice figure but is it appropriate for the pastor and congregation to see it? I don't think it's inappropriate. I think I look nice. You know I love you, don't you? Yes. Do you love me? Of course I do. Then please, respect my wishes. Find a more modest dress for the benefit, okay? Fine. Thank you. What was he doing? I don't know, he was kind of freaking out. He's pacing back and forth, agitated as hell. And then he threw a magazine across the room. That magazine? I don't know, I couldn't really see it, but he seemed pretty mad about it. He must have seen it when I dropped in the kitchen. Gone and bought a copy. We don't know anything for sure, you know? I mean, think about it. If we took this to the cops, they say that the evidence was pretty thin. I know that. Oh, God. What? You got that look. What look? You know that look you get when you're going to ask me to do something that I don't want to do? Every Sunday, Clark and his wife go to church. Yeah. They're out of the house for like three hours. They leave at 8.30 and come back around midday. Oh, no, Steph. I am not breaking into his house. I didn't ask you to. I didn't say anything. Okay. What do you want me to do? Break into his house. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! You know, breaking and entering is a felony, right? I could go to jail. He wouldn't have to actually break in. His wife leaves his spare key under a plant pot next to the front door. Okay, so if, if I do this, what am I supposed to be looking for? Any evidence that proves Clark is John List. Oh, come on, Steph. You really think he's gonna keep incriminating shit lying around all these years later? No, but there might be an older photo. If we had a picture with a clearer resemblance, it would help convince the cops. Yeah, but how are we gonna explain how we got it? I mean, surely the cops are gonna know that I broke into his house. What are they gonna <laughs> care more about? Busting you for stealing a photo or catching some guy who murdered his whole family? I can't believe I'm going to do this. 
I must be crazy. Thanks for meeting me today, Miss Phillips. I, I know you're very busy. Please, call me Ellen. Ellen. The show you produce, it's, it's intriguing. I've never seen anything quite like it before. Well, I brought it to the network, but it's really John Wesley's brainchild. You heard what happened to his kid, right? He was murdered, wasn't he? That's right, his young son. John noticed when dealing with the media how quickly they could get information out there. The TV coverage helped catch his son's killer. If it's used in the right way, the media can be a powerful weapon. It can. Of course, if I'm being honest, I've got to admit, the media's motives are hardly noble. Everyone who works in this business understands if it bleeds, it leads. Why do you think people are so, so fascinated by murder? Killers tantalize people, like traffic accidents or natural disasters. The actions of the killer are horrible, but the public just can't look away. So, did you get a chance to have a look over the details of the list case? I did. And will you consider featuring it on the show? It's the kind of taboo crime that intrigues and horrifies people. But the problem is, it took place so long ago. You have one picture that's over 20 years old. The guy probably looks very different now. I'd have to question whether or not we'd get the audience response we need to make an identification. But it's worth a shot, isn't it? I don't think the network is going to want to blot our copybook by featuring cases which are unlikely to have a positive outcome. So what are you saying? I'm saying it's a pass for now. But if you get any additional information that could improve the chances of an identification, then we'll certainly consider it for future broadcast. Time.
Okay, thanks, Leslie. All right, have a good night. Mr. See Wesley. you tomorrow. Yes? Detective Frank Clayton, sir, do you have a minute? Yeah, how can I help you, Detective? I spoke to your producer, Ellen Phillips. I'm trying to get a case featured on the show. Well, if you go through her channels, that's, she's going to arrange that for oh, you. Oh, no, she rejected it, sir. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. We have a rather full plate right now. We can't feature everybody, but perhaps sometime in the future. Well, you see, time is a factor here, sir. Look, uh, Detective, that's just the way it works here. We, you, we have to go through the channels, you know. I know what happened to your son. Yeah, well, it's a uh, matter of public record, unfortunately. John List murdered both of his sons in cold blood. Frederick and John Jr. They were 13 and 15. His daughter, too. Patricia. She was 16. I've been working this case for nearly two decades now. My department shut me down and I'm having to do it on my own time. All because I am still haunted by that crime scene. Three beautiful children, snuffed out by a man who's supposed to love and protect them. They deserve justice, Mr. Wesley. Come on, looks like you can use a drink. It was um, July back in 81. Aaron was our first and only son at the time. My wife, Deborah, and I were living the American dream. Had a great job in real estate, beautiful home. Deborah always wanted to be a mother. So when Aaron came along, it just, our lives were complete. And one day, we were in a department store browsing. Aaron was with us laughing, running in and out of the aisles like he always did. Couldn't have turned our back on him for more than a minute. It was gone. Knowing that he was out there, alone, frightened without us, I felt so helpless. Two weeks later, they found his body in a river. Opportunist abduction, murder. Our lives completely changed in a matter of minutes. The day they found Aaron's body, my heart broke into a million pieces. Years later, I'm still trying to put it back together. I'm sorry. I think what hurt even more was the fact that the local police department's response was so poor. I mean, with all due respect to you, detective, they didn't know their head from their ass. I can only imagine if they'd been a little bit more decisive. We could have found Aaron before that animal took his life. Well, if it had come to my department, it would have been a different story. Yeah, I appreciate that. But when the media got involved, I realized that we could create this wide awareness. It also restored my faith in human nature at a very dark time. We received over 40,000 letters from all over the country. People wishing us well, sympathizing, sharing their own stories. And I knew that if I could get information out there on a national scale and galvanize the public into being directly involved with finding those criminals, we could solve cases that would generally never stand a chance. This is why I came to you, Mr. Wesley. I don't share a bloodline with the list children, but but in death, I've got to know them so well. I talk to everybody about Frederick and John Jr. and Patricia. I learned about all the things they loved, their dreams, their aspirations. If I'd have caught list, then there'd be closure. But as long as he's still out there, this will never be over. Those children will never be at peace. I know. It took us years to find Aaron's murder. Closure is important. It really is. I've been chasing it for 18 years. Look, uh, Frank, I, I can't promise anything. 
I'm usually a servant to the network and these kind of things, but I'll do my best. Try and get you on the show. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. So what do you want to do next? I don't know. Well, one thing's for sure, I'm not sneaking around his house anymore. It's too risky. I know. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'll live. Maybe I should just call the cops. At least then that would shine a spotlight on him. Maybe if his IDs don't check out, they'll discover who he really is. And if we're wrong, they'll bust us for wasting police time. You don't still have doubts, do you? I don't know. We're gonna need more than just suspicion before we call the cops. I know, we've been through this. Look, I'm gonna go home, I'm pretty tired. Okay. You come by tomorrow? Sure. Damn it! Profanity isn't necessary, young man. What the hell are you doing in my car? I think it's time we had a little chat. And you needed to break into my car to do that? I guess this makes us even. What do you mean? The postman. When I left, he was right there, on the model. When I came back, he was on the floor. Unless this town experienced its first ever earthquake while I was out, it's tough to see how that could have happened. I know that you and your girlfriend, Stephanie, have taken quite an interest in me lately. No, no, be Please, just... let's level with each other. I don't know why you've been snooping around. Maybe I don't want to know. But let me tell you one thing. I value my privacy. As I'm sure you value your own. We all have a right to it. I'll respect yours if if you respect mine. And here's the point to remember. You may be watching me. But I'm also watching you. Hey, Frank, sorry I'm late. Damn production meeting ran over as usual. Not a problem. So, this is the guy I was telling you about, Dave Brenton. Good to meet you. You too. So, you're a sculptor. It's actually autodidact forensic artist. You'll have to forgive me, Dave, I'm a little behind the times. What exactly does your job entail? Facial reconstructions of fugitives based on outdated pictures. You know, aging a sculpted bust to show how they may look in the present day. See, Frank, here's the problem you have. That photograph that we have of List is as old as hell. Viewers need to see what he looks like today in order to make a positive ID. That's where Dave comes in. He fabricates that age-progressed bust so that our viewer gets a pretty good indication of what List might look like today. Massively improve your chance of a positive ID. 
It sounds terrific, but but we can't be certain of what this looks like now, so it's going to be kind of speculative, isn't it? It'll be based on a lot of research, and I'll create some various key questions. Where does he live? The city, the suburbs, and what kind of clothes does he wear? I think he would wear a pair of thick, dark brown glasses. Why do you think that? I think he would want to look more astute, you know, more in control than he really was. Well, it could be you've got the right handle on this guy. The disappearance of the daughter, uh, the Amber Alert going out for her, uh, the discovery of her body in her father's home, and then the arrest of this man. He was arrested after somebody oh, had heard God, the Amber Alert. God, that's awful. Bob, what? You hear that on the TV. A father killed his own daughter. Isn't that awful? Yeah, that's, that's terrible. What on earth could drive a man to kill his own flesh and blood? Maybe she disappointed him. Gunshot wound. Now, this is the situation, all of this uh, involving uh, his daughter, uh, 11 year old Rhea. There's been a tremendous uh, community outpouring uh, for her. Um, and the investigation. Uh, worth hey. Okay. Not really. Oh. I know you're having a tough time at the moment, and I've been working so much. I've, I haven't been here as much as I should have. I, No, it's not. Your mother, before she passed, she, she made me promise that I'd always be there for you. You have been. But not enough. I thought, we need the money, I'll do more shifts, but if I was being honest with myself, I just couldn't. I couldn't just stay at home. Along with my thoughts, it was a struggle. I still think about your mother all the time. But I just can't focus on the good times. I just... Uh, yeah. I miss her too. I'm going to be here for you, Steph. More. I'm going to be here for you more. I promise.
This house is one of the best properties on the market right now. Perfect for a family. Well, I find that most things start and end with the family. One way or another. Wow. Quite the attention to detail there, Dave. Great job. Really intricate work. Thank you. Question is, how close is this to how this looks now? Um, show tapes tomorrow. We'll find out soon enough. your shot today, Frank. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Don't worry about it. There's only 15 million people are going to be watching. Nothing to be nervous about. Out. You don't have to put a mind at ease. You'll be fine. Just follow my lead. The important thing to remember is that maybe one of those 15 million people know where John List is. And finally nail that son of a bitch. Come on. Hey, it's me. You okay? I was gonna ask you the same thing. How come you didn't come over tonight? I had football practice. It's Wednesday. Isn't practice usually on Thursday? Uh, they moved it. Don't lie to me, Danny. All right, you want me to say it? I'm kind of freaked out. I mean, that guy broke into my car and he threatened me. It's okay to be scared. I am too. I just don't know what to do. I mean, that prick said he was watching me. He's watching both of us. So, what are we gonna do? I don't know. But I do know that being together is better than being apart. Makes sense. Or to put it bluntly, if you still care about me at all, then get over here. I do still care about you. I love you, Steph. Nothing has changed on that front. Then stick with me on this. I will. Hey, Steph. You want to watch some uh, TV with your old man? Danny and Melissa are coming over. That's later. Come and watch some TV with your old man. It's good to get out of the bedroom for a while, no? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. What are you watching? Ah, oh, nothing much. Just waiting for this um, show to come on. The one where they track down America's most wanted criminals. Have you, you ever seen it? No. Oh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I was gonna make a sandwich. Uh, you want one? Yeah, sure. All right, okay. Yeah. Good evening. I'm John Wesley. Those of you who are regular viewers know that we highlight mostly recent cases. But tonight, we're turning back the clock 18 years to November the 9th, 1971. When a seemingly mild manner accountant and churchgoer, John Liss. Dad? 
part of them. What's wrong? Look, they're talking about John List. Remember I showed you that magazine? Oh. <laughs> it's the guy you think is living across the street? It's not funny, Dad. Look. We hope that someone out there tonight may know where he is. We consulted a number of profilers over those years, and they speculate that List may have obsessive compulsive disorder mm. and other associative disorders. Control is, is very important to this man. Control can be ever so subtle, uh, often hidden behind the pretense of help or advice, a suggestion, or even a joke. Maybe there's someone out there tonight may recognize this key characteristic. Hey, interesting. I know you mentioned that uh, List went to great pains to cover his tracks. He removed himself from all family photographs and wasn't particularly a social person. So it was very difficult for you to obtain a photograph for identification purposes. Th that's right. We had one very, very old photograph to go on. But, but now, thanks to the, the work of the esteemed forensic artist David Brenton, mm -hmm. We have a bust of List's head, which we have age progressed and should be able to give the viewers a good <gasps> idea. Holy shit! I told you, Dad, I told you. Oh, oh, shit, oh! Shit. We need to call the cops. Hold it, let's not get hasty here. What else are we gonna do? Maybe I could, uh, I could go over to him and, uh, and talk to him. Make, make sure it's really him. Dad, are you crazy? He's a mass murderer. Let me call the cops. Yeah, let them deal with it. Okay, okay. Okay. Dad? Dad, the power's out. Dad? snooping around, didn't you? Sorry. Shut up! I didn't want to come to this. But I have no choice. It's time to give you up to the Almighty.
Stephanie. Steph struggles to get around, so why would she go out if she knew that we were coming over? <gasps> He's still breathing. Look, um, go in there, call the cops, okay? I'm, yeah. I'm gonna make sure the Steph's all right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, kid? <coughs> yeah, yeah. Are you? Nothing. A few stitches and a couple of painkillers won't take care of. <coughs> Steph!
I've waited 18 years for this moment. For the chance to be face to face with you. To ask you how you could do it. The truth is, no answer you can give will help me sleep better at night. But what will help is knowing you're going to spend the rest of your days in an eight by nine cell. And that for every single one of those days, you'll be looking over your shoulder in fear of vigilante justice at any moment. You'll finally know what it's like to feel the terror your family felt as you murdered them. And after all of that, well, you'll still have hell to look forward to.
Thank you.